OK, so longtime Trump friend, confidant, advisor, Roger Stone, who, of course, had a huge, huge role uh, with Richard Nixon in the 1970s, has been arrested in a very early morning raid by the FBI this morning. We are still learning about the charges against him, the counts. And what we're going to uh, play for you today was my interview with him not that long ago, during which he, of course, denied all wrongdoing by everybody. There's just nothing happened, nothing to see here. And what's very interesting about this interview is that I, I'm still not exactly sure how it happened, because at the time that this interview took place, Roger Stone started to sort of reduce his media presence as it started to become. It was still very early in the suspicion that he may be wrapped up in the Mueller probe and maybe someday would be indicted. Um, but he didn't cancel our interview, which we fully expected him to do. And a funny anecdote about it before we get to the interview is that when we connected with Roger Stone for the interview, it was his assistant who made the connection. and. Because that happened, the connection was made via Skype before the interview actually started. So we were able to hear a conversation that was taking place in the background. And the conversation between Roger Stone and his staff was that he didn't want to do the interview. He wanted to cancel it. He was sort of like, do we absolutely have to do this? His staff said, well, we're, we're connected. I mean, it's happening. It's happening now. Um, and indeed, the interview ended up taking place. Here's what was in that interview. Uh, of course, now with the arrest and indictment, we have um, a lot more context and information surrounding what was discussed. I'm joined today by Roger Stone, who is a political consultant, New York Times bestselling author and author of the new book, The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. Roger, you're an in demand guy these days. It seems everybody, including people in government, want to talk to you. Uh, did, did you predict that everything surrounding what is now going on with this presidency would would blow up in the way that it has and that you'd be such a part of it? Well, uh, in my book, The Making of the President 2016, um, I really went out of my way to lay the groundwork uh, to expose this myth that Donald Trump's campaign somehow colluded with or was assisted by the Russians. Mm. Uh, it, it's all there in chapter and verse. And of course, it requires some update with the new inferences by members of Congress who have uh, inaccurately and false me accused me of such collusion for which there is no evidence whatsoever, certainly no evidence that would ever stand up in a U.S court of law. So um, I think it's becoming clearer and clearer that the whole idea of Russian collusion with Trump or the Trump campaign was the excuse, the justification, the rationale, if you will, for surveillance uh, of Trump Tower and the president and some of his associates. It certainly, according to the New York Times of January 20th, page one, wiretapped data utilized in probe of Trump associates is the headline, that would be me, um, that my conversations with Donald Trump were most certainly monitored uh, during the fall of last year. Well, now let's dig into that a little bit, right? Because my, at the center of a lot of this is the allegation made by Devin Nunes, who, of course, is in charge of the House investigation into potential collusion between Trump and Russia. What he alleged and whether it's true remains to be seen is that in surveillance by American intelligence agencies of foreign entities that there were Trump associates picked up because they were in communication with those foreign entities. That's very different than surveillance of, of conversations between you and, and the president, which I've not seen any evidence for. Well, uh, the evidence, of course, would be that all of my communications um, were monitored email. Uh, according to the, Jan the January 30th New York Times cell phone conversations. Uh, so there, by definition, my conversations, whether it is with reporters uh, or my wife or Donald Trump candidate for president were in fact monitored. I also don't think we're at the end of this scandal. Um, as I have written, um, the path, pardon me, the um, Operation Dragnet that was put in place by the NSA uh, right after 9-11 mm -hmm. 
uh, has monitored a substantial number of Americans' phone calls, and the records indicate, uh, coming from a uh, federal lawsuit in Arizona, that Donald Trump was among those being surveilled. So I think this is a developing story. What Chairman Nunes showed us was disturbing because, to be very clear, uh, the FBI director, Mr. Comey, and Admiral Rogers, the NSA director, both said under oath there was no, no surveillance uh, going on at Donald Trump, uh, at Trump Tower. And of course, that now proves to be false. But it doesn't really, because if someone at Trump Tower was being surveilled because they were in contact with a foreign entity that was being surveilled, that's very different than uh, than than surveillance of Trump Tower itself. And I, I'm wondering if no, there, there's a sort of semantic don't, I don't agree. Game being employed here to muddy the waters. I don't agree. Surveillance is surveillance. I think we're going to learn that there was more surveillance than we've been told. Like you, I, I, I also have sources and I'm working this story very hard. Um, uh, so let's let that play out. OK, I go back. I go back to this simple question, which is, if you look at the times of the 20th and you and again on the 30th, the uh, intelligence sources tell the times that they have email transmissions, they have uh, copies of financial uh, documents. Uh, and then on the 30th, they add transcripts of telephone uh, intercepts between Trump associates uh, and some Russian contact. As far as I am concerned, I'd like to see them because in my case, they do not exist. OK, that's fair. Uh, and let, I, let's let's focus then. Let's wait for that to play out and focus on on what's happened so far. I'm genuinely curious as, as one of Donald Trump's closest confidants. Uh, I don't know how often you speak to him now, but at least at one point. Uh, why do you believe that if there is nothing to hide with regard to the Russia connections and alleged collusion, why do you believe that so many people have been caught lying about meetings with Russian associates? And I'm not I'm not making this list for you. I know you know it. But for our audience, this involves uh, disgraced national security advisor Michael Flynn's lies about the content of communications with Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak. This includes Jeff Sessions and what we now know to have been two or three meetings with that same ambassador. You could include Carter Page, Jared Kushner, et cetera. Aside from whether or not you believe there was collusion, how do you explain the lies? Well, I, I don't have to explain them because I am none of those uh, people. I, I can't tell you what General Flynn may or may not have done. Uh, uh, I tend to believe Paul Manafort, who I've known for over 40 years, was a usher in my wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, we were uh, we both come from Connecticut. We were active in college and then later young Republicans. I, I choose to believe that he also had no uh, collusion or contacts uh, with the Russians. The fact that he had a contract with a Russian oligarch that ended in 2009, an oligarch, by the way, who met privately with John McCain while he was running for president, does not prove collusion in this campaign. OK, but let, let, let's look at that. We have to explore that in meetings. detail, though, Roger. We've got to dig into that in detail because you're on record. I mean, on August 15th on the Alex Jones show, which is a whole other set of conversations and questions we could have. You said that Paul Manafort has never worked for the Ukrainian government or for the Russian government. You said on August 18th on Breitbart that, News that is, Daily. And that is still accurate. And that is still accurate. Well, only if you want to play a very muddy semantic game, because it's widely known now that he had multiple contracts furthering Russian interests. And to, to, I believe that only if you are going in a, in a semantic direction is that true. You've been proven to have either you didn't know or you lied about that. I have to disagree with you. First okay. of all, Russian government is very specific. That's the Russian state. You made reference to multiple contracts. I only have read about one with this fella, Dara Pasca, mm -hmm. uh, which I was not aware of uh, at the time, but I still don't think it proves Russian uh, collusion. So. No, but again, I, I Roger, I, I want to just lying. I, I, I want very precise in my language. I, if, if we want to look at precise language, you did tweet on October 31st that Paul Manafort yeah. has no Russian ties. That's different no, than that, saying he wasn't working be, for the Russian be, government. Again, be, having a 10 million dollar contract is a tie, is it not? Uh, I would concede that. And and uh, look, let he his, who is without sin cast the first stone. Well, but that aside, uh, when Pascas you made that story, tweet, when you made that tweet on October 31st, was it a lie or did you not know? 
Uh, clearly, I didn't know about the Deripaska story because if I had, I would not have said that. At the same time, I still think his relationship with Deripaska does not constitute uh, collusion during the 20, uh, 2016 campaign when the contract ended in 2009. OK, uh, we are now starting to starting to hear um, from from some Democrats exclusively at this point that uh, they believe ultimately some of the individuals associated with what they believe is collusion or coordination with Russia will end up in jail or prison in the United States. Well, what's your reaction? Do you, do you think everybody's going to get off scot free here? Uh, I'm I, like you. I would like to uh, see the investigation. I'd like to see these hearings go forward. Right. But, you know, uh, so I, much more than some of the people waiting for the investigation. So knowing what you know, what's your sense? Well, that's an assumption on your part. I don't know General Flynn. I've never met him. I've never had any communications with him. I know him from watching him on television. Uh, and, I, and I cannot tell you what he may or may not have done and whether any of it rises to the level of collusion. Uh, he doesn't join the campaign uh, until the fall. I have no contact with him, and I don't know. I've read Carter Page's book. Um, he denies everything. I don't know the gentleman, never met him, had no dealings with him. Best I can tell, he appended himself to a 100-member um, issue advisory uh, committee as some kind of a Russian expert. Um, I I'm not certain who else you're talking about, I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but I do know as far as I am concerned, there is no collusion uh, or coordination of any kind with any representative of the Russian state. All right, let's pick it up there. We've been speaking with uh, Roger Stone. He is the author of the new book, The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. He's not kidding that he talks about a lot of these issues in the book. I've been reviewing it before our interview for the last week or so. Let's pause there and pick up the conversation with him tomorrow. We're continuing our conversation with Roger Stone. He's a political consultant, the New York Times bestselling author and author of the new book, The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. We wrapped up part one of the interview uh, uh, with, with some more general thoughts about what's going on in, in, in the current investigation. Let's see if we can sort out what's true and what isn't about your involvement in associations. Have you ever Sir. met Ambassador Sergei Kislyak? I have not. You've never met him and never uh, met him. Didn't, didn't know his name until I read it in connection with um, Senator Sessions meeting. Of course, Senator Sessions is a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, and because he met with the ambassador, you can put a negative spin on that. But we don't know what the cut with the content uh, or subject of the meetings is. No. And Jeff Sessions at first didn't even remember that the meetings had taken place. So I think that Jeff Sessions may not be the best person to go to to figure out what the content of the meeting was uh, with regard to the what's known colloquially as the Steele dossier or the, the Trump Russia blackmail dossier. Call it what you will. Um, were you on uh, uh, the Miss Universe trip to Moscow in October of 2013? Is that a trip you were on? I was not. You were not. And I was not. with regard to that, that trip or any others, can you definitively say that Donald Trump has not ever consorted with prostitutes with which is one of those claims made in the dossier? Yeah, the dossier, as you I think, you know, um, kicked around for quite some time. It mm -hmm. got shopped during the Republican primaries. It got shopped during the general election. Most responsible media organizations wouldn't touch it. It's rife with misspellings, among other things. And, uh, and some and, correct and have, assertions as well. Well, uh, the point I guess I would make is that um, at the time of the trip, I recall uh, Keith Schiller, who was the head of the security detail for uh, now President Trump, telling me that his contact, the person assigned to be the contact with the Trump traveling party on behalf of the uh, the pageant, who right. presumably was actually an agent for the government, uh, said that he planned to send girls to uh, Mr. Trump's room and was told under no circumstances to do so, and that Keith, who was a very smart guy, posted guards at both the front and rear entrances of the hotel, as well as the door to Mr. Trump's room. Also, knowing him for 40 years, knowing of, of his germophobia, mm -hmm. knowing about his penchant for privacy, 
and uh, I just find it almost impossible to believe. I, I think that it is a whole cloth. Um, and the idea that Senator McCain would send this to the FBI, I think that should be examined because I'd like to know what he knew about the origins of this document. Well, but it that, I mean, clearly John McCain, by John McCain didn't create the document. So wouldn't the obvious thing to do would, would be to send it to someone who can maybe try to verify what the claims are and who the source is? I mean, you're not suggesting unless you're suggesting McCain created the document. It seems that no, as I'm a senator, that's that. what he should have done, right? Send it to the to No, the I'm, intel. I'm suggesting I'm suggesting uh, as an experienced individual of some judgment, he might have been able to look at it and see that it is um, highly questionable, to say the least. Uh, too much has already been written about something that I believe is entirely fraudulent. This did not happen. It, it is so out of the realm of the possibilities for Donald Trump, if you knew him, um, that it just has no credibility. I, I also think that we have traced uh, Mr. Steele to a number of the neocons. I believe that that's where this was created. The the fellow who makes these assertions, I think, is not credible. Well, hold on a second, though, Roger. But that I think you're muddying the waters a little bit. Let's disaggregate some of those claims. It seems as though Steele was initially hired to do opposition research on Trump by other Republican candidates. But Correct. Mr. Steele's credibility has not been called into question by any serious individuals. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. Continue. But who, who, who that uh, that we can go to and say they have the knowledge that we would we would believe people, uh, people in the political community who are operatives like myself are familiar with Mr. Steele and his work. He was um, also involved. Uh, peripherally in the case of the poisoning uh, by presumably the Russians mm -hmm. of a gentleman in London. He pops up again in the in the uh, the Billy Bush tape uh, matter. So uh, I'm not sure that he is uh, the best source. But my understanding was that his source was a on the ground Russian who made these claims. OK, let's finalize the, this this topic and then we'll move on to some other things. So you said a lot of things about how the, the prostitution story is not coherent with your 40 year knowledge of Trump. But are you saying Correct. definitively that to your knowledge, Donald Trump has never consorted with a prostitute? Uh, not to my knowledge. No, absolutely not. OK, you've talked about your willingness to uh, testify on this issue, but you want to do it openly rather than behind closed doors. Simultaneously, yes. you've declined to say who your mutual friend with Julian Assange is. If asked about that mutual friend during the open testimony that you want, will you reveal who that individual is? Well, I think you call it a uh, source. I mean, I, I reported this on my syndicated radio show. Mm -hmm. I reported it on my show on Infowars. I reported it in my weekly column. Uh, no, I'm not going to give away a source who turns out to be right. Uh, this person is a reporter for a reputable news organization uh, in the United States. And what they told me was exceedingly limited, that there would be a data dump on Hillary Clinton in October, and it would be devastating, and that it would include everything, which I took to mean would include uh, some emails or some documents that had allegedly uh, been you know, erased or deleted uh, at the State Department. Now, WikiLeaks essentially on July 31st in a tweet says really pretty much the same thing, a tweet I was unaware of at the time. Mm -hmm. So my source is correct. I don't intend to give them up uh, because I don't want to cost them their job. I'm not going to expose a reporter in that way. But the information they gave me does not fit the narrative that I knew in advance and coordinated the scope or thrust or content of the WikiLeaks disclosures. I also don't buy the idea that WikiLeaks is a Russian asset. It doesn't matter how many times the intelligence services want to say this, doesn't make it true. Even FBI Director Comey said when asked in the House Intelligence Committees that their assessment is that that uh, Assange had or the Russians had used some kind of cutout. That's right. Some uh, kind of middle person. Yeah. Assessment to me is usually a code for for we don't know, but we're guessing. 
Uh, you have talked about the poisoning that you believe you suffered in January. And yes. um, I, I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the, the symptoms I've read you had were fever, rash and hair loss. And, and you've attributed this to a poisoning of some kind. Well, vomiting, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, night sweats, delirium. Yeah, this was not a day at the beach. I don't recommend it for uh, for weight loss. My doctor is convinced that I was poisoned with some uh, exogenous substance which may have been radioactive. I have another blood test uh, this Friday. I was very sick. Can I can I prove who might have done this or their motive? No. Uh, OK, I but let's, so let's, let, let's pick it up on that. So number one is have you or would you be willing to release something from your doctor saying that their belief is that the most likely explanation was that you were poisoned? For, for what purpose? I'm not an elected official uh, or a public official. Um, I have written my experience. Uh, people can make their own judgments. OK, uh, I don't I, I don't want to dwell on this. I understand that others do because well, because it it's just so I mean, if, if, if indeed someone tried to poison you, that's a very interesting story. I mean, who do you have any sense of how well, you might have contracted the poison? Uh, before we leave this, um, it could have been um, consumed, ingested in food or drink. It could have been um, surface uh, uh, absorbed. Um, that has evidently been done. As you probably also know, I was involved in a hit and run accident. Um, this very same day mm -hmm. uh, or the day after the House committee expressed an interest in my testimony where we were broadsided, uh, the, uh, the uh, car that hit us you couldn't detect who was driving it because the windshield was so deeply tinted and they took off. Now, I find that very suspicious. Mm. The car I was riding in was was very badly damaged um, and perhaps totaled. The airbags went off, uh, but whoever hit us didn't sustain enough damage to their car that it didn't run like ours, uh, threw it in reverse and took off. So that's twice the 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 uh, sickness around Christmas when I believe I was poisoned happens immediately after Senator McCain calls for my testimony. The accident, if you want to call it that, the hit and run, which yeah. was filed with the police, uh, with the sheriff's office, um, happens the day after um, Congressman Schiff and others express an interest in my testimony. But Roger, and I asked this, perhaps, I asked this in a completely honest and open way. If indeed the goal of either or both of these incidents was to prevent your testimony from coming out, don't you think that it's almost sort of like too obvious to do it when the idea of you testifying is suggested? Why? It's not like you were going to testify the next day. Why not wait a little bit? It seems incredibly haphazard. Well, uh, if you are trying to make the case um, implausibly and incredibly crazy as this is that the the Russians uh, wanted to take out Stone to silence him. No, I'm not making that implication. Not. I'm just genuinely curious why why it would happen in, in that way, in a way that me would too. clearly draw uh, so much too. attention. It's not the, me too. It, it has a certain uh, illogic to it. But it then, you know, uh, I, I don't know who, I don't know if there is a perp, and I don't know what the perp's thinking is if one exists. Yeah. Again, I don't want to distract from the fundamental question of whether we can prove that there were substantial and meaningful contacts between anyone of in a position of authority or influence in the Trump campaign and yeah. the Russians. Yeah. I, I, don't, I still don't think that is the case. No, I know you don't think that. I know you don't think that. Um, the last thing I want to touch on, and I know you've got just a couple of minutes left. Uh, in retrospect, you were one of the individuals propping up the birther theories of Barack Obama not being born in the United States. Certainly you encouraged Donald Trump that this is something he should be public about and look into. Um, number one, I think what's that's your a, current? That's a slight. Uh, that's a slight uh, overstatement. I, I was never an advocate for this point of view, um, but I learned about his interest in it. And he asked me what I thought. And I yeah. said, you know, follow your conscience. If everything you've read convinces you that there is something there. That's the thing about Donald Trump. No one puts words in his mouth or ideas in his head. He does not work like a conventional politician. I've written <laughs> talking points for, you know, several presidential candidates yeah. and several presidents. Trump just doesn't operate that way. What's your current belief about the birthplace of the former president? 
Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I have looked online uh, at the document that he produced. I have also read a number of appearingly dispassionate, um, you know, uh, internet experts who question whether it's real. I have no idea whether it's real, but he's no longer president. I'm not sure why this is significant. Uh, if you look at my tweets, if you look at things that I have written at stonezone.com or yeah. stonecoldtruth.com, I've never written on this. I've never tweeted on it. I, but you're, never, that's fine, but you're not, you're, you're saying you don't know that the president was born in the United States. What would, well, convince, I mean, you, said, what would he, convince you that President Obama was born in the United States? Uh, I'm not sure that I can ever know for sure. By the way, I'm not saying that he wasn't. I'm, all I'm saying is I'm not sure. But so you're saying you can't even imagine hypothetical evidence if it existed that would convince you that Barack uh, do, Obama I mean, was born I, in the U.S. I think it is odd that all of his personal records are sealed. Uh, I think it is odd that it took this long to produce the birth certificate when he could have made fools of his critics much earlier. Instead, this has festered. Uh, I think it is true that Donald Trump in a certain sense, was able to bring it from the fringe into a more mainstream discussion. Yeah, but Roger, know, if you're telling me least, that I you know can't take this argument, if you're telling me that there's not even hypothetical evidence that would convince you that the former president was born in the U.S., you're not really dealing in the world of facts. You've just decided you'll never be convinced that that doesn't seem like a very uh, objective position. If you're saying I couldn't even imagine evidence that would convince me of it. That's well, weird I don't think. Me. No, obviously, if somebody wants to if someone wants to present me with the actual document that we've seen copies of and it were uh, and it it were certified to be real, of course, I would accept it. Ah. But no, that's not going that's not going to happen. So I only know what I have read about this. And I think it's curious at a number of turns in the road. Uh, the president says he was born here. I, it's irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. His presidency is over. It is indeed uh, a fascinating far more guy. Yeah. To me, far more important to me would be the question of whether people in his administration uh, illegally uh, unmasked uh, the names of certain U.S. citizens who are active in the Trump campaign yes. uh, and how high, you know, this particular move went. Well, hopefully we will get answers to a lot of the questions you and I have raised during both parts of this interview. The book is The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. We've been speaking with the book's author, Roger Stone. Thanks for talking to us. I know you've been busy these past few weeks. Uh, many thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you.